Welcome to Flix Studio Recaps, where we recap trending movies. Today, we'll be recapping the movie Purple Heart, which has become a huge hit in the world. The story revolves around Cassie Salazar, who works as a waitress and performs with her band, The Loyal, at a local bar in America. Cassie has been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and finds it challenging to afford the necessary insulin. To make ends meet, she takes on multiple jobs. One night, she serves a group of Marines who are about to be deployed to Iraq. Among them is Luke Morrow, who shows interest in Cassie, but she rejects his advances. Luke has his own struggles as he battled addiction following his mother's death. Although he has been clean for two years, he still owes a significant debt to his dealer, Jono. Luke seeks help from his estranged retired Marine father, but his request is turned down. In a surprising turn of events, Cassie proposes to Frankie, a childhood friend, and Luke's bunkmate, so she can benefit from the military spouse's health insurance. However, Frankie reveals his plans to marry his sweetheart, Riley. Luke overhears their conversation and advises against a fraudulent marriage. However, he realizes that a marriage between him and Cassie could solve their financial problems. Luke would receive more money, and Cassie would gain access to military spouse health care. Eventually, they agree to get married before Luke's deployment, with the plan to file for divorce after a year. During the wedding, Frankie, who serves as the witness, gives Cassie a ring intended for Riley, asking her to keep it safe. After the ceremony, the newlyweds celebrate at the bar with Frankie and Luke's fellow Marines. An argument erupts between Cassie and one of the Marines over a toast involving hunting Arabs. To maintain appearances, Cassie and Luke pretend to reconcile. That night, Luke opens up to Cassie about his fears surrounding the marriage and his upcoming deployment. Cassie provides comfort, and they share an intimate night together. The next morning, the Marines are deployed, and before Luke boards the bus, he gives Cassie his brother's contact information as she is now his next of kin. Cassie and Luke begin communicating through emails and video calls to keep up the appearance of their marriage. Cassie shares with Luke that she wrote a song called Come Back Home dedicated to the Marines. She performs the song, lifting their spirits after a challenging day. The song unexpectedly goes viral, bringing attention to Cassie and Luke's relationship. Luke asks Cassie if he is her muse, and she admits that he might be. One night while performing, Cassie receives a call informing her that Luke has been severely injured in an IED explosion and will be sent back home. Cassie attempts to contact Luke's brother but mistakenly reaches out to their father, which angers Luke as his father is a retired Marine officer who would potentially report their fraudulent marriage. Additionally, it is revealed that Frankie has been killed in action. At Frankie's funeral, Cassie gives Riley the ring she had promised to keep safe for him. Luke, now using a wheelchair, moves into Cassie's apartment after being discharged from the hospital. Luke creates a wedding ring out of his dog tag chain for Cassie, and they redecorate their home to maintain the illusion of their marriage for Luke's father, who picks him up for physical therapy. To aid in Luke's recovery, Cassie adopts an emotional support animal named Peaches, a golden retriever. Luke's rehabilitation and their living arrangements serve as inspiration for Cassie, leading her to write another powerful song titled I Hate the Way. She delivers an incredible performance of the song at Whiskey A Go Go, catching the attention of record companies. Meanwhile, Jono, still determined to collect his money, vandalizes Cassie's mother's window and threatens Luke. That night, Cassie experiences a drop in her sugar levels, causing her to go into shock. Luke comes to her aid, helping her recover, and they share a tender kiss. The following day, Luke confronts Jono, physically confronting him and giving him the money owed, along with a warning to stay away. However, Jono decides to retaliate by revealing Luke's past to Cassie's mother. 
When Cassie confronts Luke about this revelation, he admits to stealing his father's car to sell it but ended up crashing it instead. As a result, he had to borrow money from Jono to repay the debt. Feeling betrayed, Cassie demands a divorce and insists that Luke vacate her apartment by the next day. Upon Luke's return from a run, he is apprehended by the military police, MPs, as Jono has informed them about their fraudulent marriage. Luke's father contacts Cassie, informing her about the charges and the upcoming trial. During the trial, Luke pleads guilty, assuming full responsibility for the situation and clarifying that Cassie was unaware of the military law violation. He receives a six-month sentence in the brig and will be discharged afterward. Meanwhile, Cassie's band signs a record deal and secures an opening act slot for Florence and the Machine at the prestigious Hollywood Bowl. During the performance, which coincides with the day of Luke's imprisonment, Cassie sings her latest song, I Didn't Know, which she apparently wrote while awaiting Luke's trial. After the show, she rushes to express her love for Luke before he is taken away. In a poignant moment, Luke gives her his wedding ring, signifying the depth of their connection, and tells her, it's real now. As the credits roll, six months have passed, and Luke and Cassie are happily married, enjoying a picnic on the beach with their beloved emotional support animal, Peaches. If you enjoy the movie, stay tuned for more blockbuster movies, and remember to subscribe to our channel for future recaps.